Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and a slightly sleep deprived Jedi but I'm gonna have a go at recording anyway. This time around I am gonna play with the tier 5 British battlecruiser HMS Tiger which is uh, the sole representative of its class because there was only one and uh, possibly was also one of the splendid cats but I'm not entirely sure about that. I know HMS Lion and HMS, what was it, HMS Princess Royal had that nickname, which were uh, two of the uh, the Lion class battlecruisers. But uh, I don't know if Tiger was also included in that sort of collective nickname because you know it's 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 got kind of a cat theme as well. Certainly a, a pretty good looking ship. I've got the Jutland camo on it and uh, that's, that's camo. I've actually got a couple of ships. It's quite a good looking one. Of course, these days having a camo on is actually um, kind of less efficient credit wise. If you want to maximize your credits, then uh, unless it's a perma camo, of course, or you have a huge stock of camos, which I kind of do at the moment, actually. It's not costing me anything. Uh, to to use these big piles of camos, but eventually once they need restocking, um, yeah, it'll it'll cost me a little bit extra. But if you're playing with a premium account, I guess it's I I, I don't know, I think it's worth bearing just because I like how they look. But uh, yeah, certainly if you're a free to play player, you know, once upon a time you would look at the people without camos and. Uh, uh, you know, think, oh, you're missing out, you're missing out on benefits, quite important benefits, but of course these days, um, yeah, you can absolutely, you know, like, there's no, there's no real reason to, unless you just like how it looks, which I must admit I do. I was sort of tempted, by the way, to do a video with a Congo instead, which doesn't look all that different from HMS Tiger, uh, for those that are somehow unaware. Uh, Congo was the first uh, of the uh, 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 sort of modern battleships slash battlecruisers that um, uh, Japan ordered and uh, they ordered it from Britain and what they did was basically um, Britain built the first one in their own shipyards and then uh, the rest of them were built in Japanese shipyards to sort of build up Japan's own shipbuilding experience for large modern capital ships. So that's why there is a, a distinct similarity. So technically Congo was kind of the first British battlecruiser, not really, the first British designed battlecruiser that we had in game, but not actually British. But you can certainly see the, uh, the, the very sort of heavy similarities in the lines between uh, Congo and Tiger. Anyway, of course, Congos were the, the Congos were refit. Uh, Tiger, I'm pretty sure, had retired by the time of World War Two. I mean, it, its contemporary Iron Duke was still, you know, afloat, but um, I mean, that was uh, a training ship at that point, if memory serves. Whereas, uh, yeah, T Tiger, alas, I think was one of the victims of the tonnage limits. And it was only the uh, uh, the the battleships and the uh, the hood class, I think, that they kept around. I don't. Oh, and, and, and of course, there was the uh, the renowns. I did see uh, uh, a thing on. It was probably somewhere like Deviant Art. Someone had done a, a sort of um, Queen Elizabeth slash War Spite. Queen Anne's Mansion style hypothetical refit, which looked not bad for HMS Tiger. It was um, certainly quite a different outline, but even in its original sort of three funnel configuration, it's it's a reasonably handsome looking ship. Anyway, uh, I don't know why someone's saying Happy Easter. <laughs> I don't know. Is that some kind of inside joke? We've actually lucked out. This is uh, pure tier five, no carriers at all so that's quite nice uh yeah this is also um cunningham again as it was with repulse so i've got my brisk which doesn't have any downsides i don't think on a battleship i it, it does on on um 
on destroyers, which is a little bit of a pity for a four point skill. Given that it's a four point skill, you know, that's already kind of the downside of having to use it in that you could have uh, other much more useful skills. But uh, yeah, no, they, they slap that, uh, that reload penalty on as well. And it's, a, it's definitely a pity because some of the uh, the slower ships that have the slow destroyers that have longer reloads uh, that, that uh, would really benefit from it. But you, if you want that, then you have to take almost the skill that gives the 5% buff just to cancel out the 5% nerf you've taken from uh, Brisk. So that's even more points tied up. Anyway, um, nobody's quite in range yet. This doesn't have an amazing range compared to Congo. Uh, 16.3. It's still not bad for tier 5, it's perfectly workable. Um, but actually a lot of the tier 5 battleships have very, very good ranges. You know, there's there's, there's uh, the New York, uh, Texas, and uh, I can't remember Iron Duke's. Iron Duke isn't that good. Congo is definitely quite good. Um, I can't remember what Britannia's is. Britannia's maybe not that good. But yeah, some of them really do. It's, it's some of the, the, the tier 5 battleships actually do hold up relatively well in that uh, they have... Like, they don't have the armor or the firepower necessarily, but they do have the ranges to work with uh, getting into tier 7 games. We're unspotted, so I'll just nix that fire, I think. Uh, also, is it, what's the torpedo range against? Like 6 kilometers, right? Yeah. It's quite a long reload. For single for, for single torps, so they, they don't want you to just be spamming them out at random. They want you to use them when it's actually necessary to use them when you're quite close range. Uh, talking of Britannia, there's one right there. Right, you're really just kind of chugging along. There's a tiger there as well. I actually, I have to say, New York and uh, Texas especially are kind of, um, this is an awkward, okay, I wasn't really wanting to, Engine boost like, this, activated. like the, the Britannia is fairly slow, but this guy's also seems to have specifically slowed down, so, uh, Torpedoes yeah. because I thought, hey, there's a Nicholas there that's going to try something Torpedoes like that, and lo and behold, it has. The Shazar has only taken, uh, there we go. Yeah, I really wanted to make that turn there. <laughs> oh, uh, well, since there's no one else to say it, bless me, I suppose. Um, yeah. They, I guess, didn't realize. <laughs> Even though the Nicholas turned and got both sets of torps. Uh, still weren't able to quite get that kill. Aromatsuki went back to the B cat for some reason. I mean, it's not a great destroyer, but could have smoked up and I don't know. They could have come on this side and been dropping torpedoes or something. Who knows? Right. So uh, this flank's not looking so great. But we actually are a ship ahead. Uh, but I'm gonna have to get a bit closer. I think. I don't think the guns on this are especially amazing or anything. I mean, uh, it's got. It's still decently okay, but uh, I seem to remember checking and seeing that some of the shells actually perform worse than the, uh, the Iron Duke. And of course, it's got fewer guns than Iron Duke, if I remember correctly. Yes, no, Iron Duke's got five turrets, right? I'm sure it does. And of course, you're actually then uh, going down to only, uh, uh, from this with four turrets, you're going down to three turrets, although larger guns with uh, Repulse and Renown. But yeah, here's a situation when uh, I'm facing oh, at least one ship that's got much higher range. Cavour? I actually can't remember. But I'm not too worried about the Cavour, to be honest. Um, the New York is probably the biggest threat. I was I was starting to say earlier, New York is actually one of the ones I um, 
I, I weirdly enough do go and play for fun still. Which might be very weird in some people's eyes. But the, the 14 inch guns on the New York are pretty good. Uh, the only real light down, I mean like I said the range is very good, but the only real light down is that the armor is uh, really quite prone to taking sort of big hits from any angles potentially. Can also feel uh, it can feel an awfully lot like um, uh, sort of like Nelson or something of that ilk. And that's not even facing higher tier things, or you know, plenty of tier five battleships that can just you think you're angling, uh, but then no, you just eat a giant pen out of nowhere, and it's really unpleasant. Uh, how are we doing? Britannia's not looking that hot. Britannia's, Britannia's probably still the, the weakest overall. I mean, Cavour's not great as a tier 5 battleship, but uh, Britannia's slow on top of having its its uh, fairly weak guns. So, yeah, right, let's just keep the stealth. I don't want to open fire here just yet. Yeah, I'm not really feeling like I have the punch of something like a New York. Is that gonna manage to arc over? I don't know. I don't think so. Right. Uh, oh, some of them hit though. That's fine. I wonder if I should try and get in close. My armor, I think, will hold up better. I mean, New York's got the bigger guns, but I do have torpedoes, of course. The rear angles on the, this, are, uh, they're actually pretty good, I think. Um, not as, quite as good as some other ships, but the maneuverability it has overall, yeah. Okay, sure, let's see if we can't make use of torpedoes. I mean, hopefully the New York We'll be worried about destroyers and uh, it's something we've got for attacker now as well. Are you far on KG? Oh, slow down here for attacker. Little warning toot. Sometimes people, you know, if their attention is like off in that direction, they might not necessarily see from the mini map. Uh, or from just sort of looking generally that, oh, hey, yeah, I'm going to turn into somebody that I'm trying to avoid. Alright, there's the enemy tiger that's come back. Watch out for crossfire from the Cavour as well. Yeah, he's turning away. I think this New York player has got some reasonable idea of my capabilities. Go on, torpedoes! Yes, there we are. Chunking! Right, how about this? Let's get the back Right, you've fired. Let's fire. Speed boost. Engine boost activated. Bring at the front turrets on the chunking. And I Duke up there as well. But we've won the other flag, so I don't need to do anything drastic here. Can't say I'm very impressed with the damage my guns have done though. Like this many hits. Maybe I should just be lobbing HE. Try that a bit more in the next game. I tend to prefer AP generally. It's one of the reasons why, like, I go back to New York because New York's AP is great. But with Iron Duke, man, you need to use so much high explosive, and it just feels kind of dirty. It's not even something like the KGV where um, it feels like the HE can be. Well, I mean, you can just only fire HE with uh, 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 KGV or a, a Duke of York, and it's like okay. You know, that, that's viable, it's kind of, it feels a bit dirty, but um, the AP on those is still pretty good. Um, but yeah, you get the uh, uh, the Iron Duke and it's like, well, no, it feels like there aren't really that many circumstances where it's worth using the AP. I'm kind of wondering if this is going to be the same with these guns. Right, are you, are you not using... Concealment expert? I can't really tell. Anyway, that's a bit more broadside, but I've not... Yeah, I'm not particularly impressed with either the accuracy or the the, the 
performance, like 20 penetrations, 47k, 5 overpens, I don't know. I'm definitely not going to be stealthing up at this sort of uh, range. But having said, oh yeah, we're doing all right. They've, they've won the other flank, actually. I'm not 100% I'm not sure we are doing that, that all right at this point. Kavul's facing off against the Hill and the Durflinger, and Hill does not have particularly long-range torps. The Iron Duke has just decided to leave this tiger in the lurch, so <clears throat> maybe I should try some high explosive here, actually. Right, there's the stealth, and a little bit of a speed kick. If the Matsuki would cap the A cap, that would be great. So we've had a mix of some players that know what they're doing and other players. <laughs> I mean, it's tier 5. It's always a bit wild at tier 5. Alright, the Minikaze is going to be in the D cap. And he's just killed the Omaha, okay. I'm going to guess whatever the... I'm going to guess that wasn't particularly complimentary. Whatever was said there. Now, I remember these uh, looking these up and seeing that they didn't have as much fire chance, but, you know, they still had the penetration and they still had pretty good fire chance. Yeah, this still could go to them. We've got to be careful here. Mind you, still very healthy. Cavour's still very healthy. I mean, the hill, if the hill can, can find... The, uh, the Minikaze. Uh, oh, there goes the for attacker. Mutsuki, cap! Mutsuki, why are you not capping, Mutsuki? There's no one that can spot you right now. Why did you go? I don't know. Just, just cap. We need the cap. Plus. Right, I guess that's the, yeah, that's, that's, I didn't set any fires that, uh, stuck, did I? I'll be the for attacker's fire that's going there. Yeah, that's right, I got one and then he put it out so the for attacker was able to get a fire to stick. Right, I'm not... <laughs> I really am not going to trust the Mutsuki to screen me from this Minikaze in any effective way. But we know roughly where they are, at least. And if I remain spotted, then we know they're close enough to... yeah. So, uh, let's use the final speed boost. Boost and there's some uh, Iron 2KG. We'll extinguish that because I want to stay stealthier. There goes the Deathling. I think we're going to lose this one actually. Yeah. Alas! Their battleships were just too healthy at the end of this. Now Mutsuki took far too long to get in there and cap. If we can kill the Minikaze though, right, both destroyers are converging on the B cap. Um, Matsuki does still have the fire health. <laughs> There's the uh, the, the one uh, viewer slash Patreon support that um, Fu was here who, who always has the what would you call it, an axiom something like that that um, you know the team with the most Matsukis loses. So that might be what's going to happen here. Who knows? Or have they just retreated back to the middle? Take a pop at the Iron Duke, who is definitely, yeah. If 
find the HE, but you kind of feel like you have to fire the HE in the Iron Duke. There's the Minikaze. Uh, actually out of range for me. I have to hope that... Uh, do you... Are you in range, Matsuki? Gun range? I mean, the Matsuki might not be in gun range. So it might just be one of those Japanese destroyer players that... It's sort of increasingly rare these days, but it certainly used to be a bit of a trope of Japanese destroyer players not realising they could use their guns. Uh, no, I don't think they're going to get that Minikaze. So the Iron Duke at the edge of the... Oh, that was the Tiger I think I saw briefly there. Yeah, I was thinking about like, if I could charge down the Iron Duke, but no, can't take the Iron Duke and the Tiger at the same time, not in close proximity. Oh well, it's a pity, I thought we might win this one, but um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. There's the Iron Duke. Right, let's power on work. I think we will stick with the HE ourselves. It's not especially what I want to do, but I need to get some fires going before I can risk switching back to, back to uh, AP shells. Just to sap some damage. So starting to come into possibly the range of the Cavour. No. Oh well, I, I, this is just playing for extra damage at this point. <laughs> uh, there's no hope of... Uh, unless the Matsuki manages a miracle and suddenly detonate several ships. I mean, I do still have heals left, but, you know, I just don't have the teammates or the time. Which is a bit of a limiting factor. Right, you put that fire out. Get a little heal going. If he eats a torpedo or something, you know, they'll have flooding to add to his woes. Fire! I can't really afford fires myself at this point. I'm just hoping to get out of range of the Iron Duke, to be honest. The enemy is about to win. Problem solved, sir. Yeah, I think this is, uh... It's only gonna go one way, alas. I don't think there's even time to... Well, I'm gonna get one more shot off before the, uh, the game ends. It's not gonna be enough time to get the Cavour unless somehow they miraculously detonate. Oh, we're out of time anyway, so never mind. Never mind. Not that it mattered. Well, we had a semi-respectable amount of damage at the end of that, but uh, that was well past the point at which we'd already lost. Yeah. Um, oh, we actually had two Mutsukis, so we were doomed from the start, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely doomed to Matsuki as well. I might as well have just quit back to port right there and then, apparently. Let's give that another go. I will say I enjoy the speed. I can I can forgive kind of weak guns if a ship has decent speed and 
uh, certainly having good stealth helps as well. I mean, um, I like the Normandy a lot more than the Britannia, for example, just because it is a big increase in speed, even though Normandy's guns aren't really great. And it has a pretty awkward turret arrangement. Okay, uh, still lucky matchmaking. In fact, better matchmaking in that there's some tier fours, but also worse in that there's one of the tier fours per team is a carrier. So that's fun. Also, once again, we have the Mutsuki. Oh no, we are doomed. Also, there's one poor carrier squashed in. I don't think I'm going to get... Um, Oh, same map as well. I don't think I'm going to get the uh, the the renowned unlocked via the tokens. I think I might end up having to grind this line the old-fashioned way, which feels kind of weird these days. They've bombarded us now for so long with these pre-line release events as a, as a way of you know monetizing tech trees, and uh, this time round I've just. It's not like I haven't been playing the game, I just haven't been playing nearly enough to earn enough tokens to to really get very far. So, um, yeah, just being a filthy casual, it's only got me as far as tier 5, apparently. I guess we'll see how well the AA does, I mean, what's the, uh, yeah, fairly short ranged, okay, that's pretty typical. I think there's really many tier 5 battleships with a decent AA range. You used to be able to, you know, like back in the the, the glory days of old CVs, which by which I mean, um, uh, you know, back when at least you could spec your AA ships <laughs> to have some meaningful AA. Uh, Texas was, uh, you know, that was an extra level of fun right there just with being able to uh, uh, not only boost your AA DPS, but your AA range as well. Of course, you just can't do that anymore. It was uh, one of the nerfs, sort of global nerfs that went along with uh, the captain skill rework was that, uh, that removal of AA range, um, which definitely affected some ships more than others. I mean, New York is absolutely the worst example of a uh, a, a ship where, you know, the, the AA was the big gimmick of it over the, the New, over the New York. It was the big selling point. And uh, uh, what did they do? Did, 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 did they buff the base range of the New York to compensate? No. They have done that in the past, but, you know, the, the only notable example I can really think of is the, uh, Kutuzov, when AFT stopped affecting 6-inch guns. That's going back in the day a bit now, but, um, yeah, they decided they were just going to bake in the extra range to Kutuzov. And it, it would, would have been really nice if they'd baked in the extra AA range to the, uh, the, the Texas. Or, hell, if they baked even the uh, the uh, small caliber gun range buff to the the Krasny Krim. But this isn't a video about the Krasny Krim. I've done a video <laughs> complaining about the state of the Krasny Krim, so yeah. Ah, oh, Nicholas, you should be outgunning this guy. Oh well. But he's not, alas. Engine boost activated. Oof, yeah, that was a nasty hit. Right, Iron Duke's firing HE. Let's nix that fire. fire. Ugh, that RNG was not kind to me there. Enemy He's gonna get away, how annoying. Right, I think I'd better focus the Iron Duke here, because otherwise he's just gonna Problem help solved. me with that. Oh, there's a Queen Mary as well. Excellent. Fire. Two HE spamming battleships is going to be uh, a problem. When they are the Iron Duke. So the great thing about the New York is you can just keep your range from things like the Iron Duke. And outrange them as well, but this doesn't really have that luxury. That must still be in range of the Queen Mary as well. They're at least trying to switch up their use of ammo. 
Man, this is going to be a very boring game if I just get burned out by an Iron Duke. Yeah, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm just going to get burned out by an Iron Duke. Yeah. That right there is the reason I don't play the Iron Duke. It's just such a brain-dead ship that gave it terrible a uh, AP shells, but bonkers HE. Oh well, this is also shaping up to be a loss as well, so... Um, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Sort of the original plan. Let's go Congo. <laughs> let's go Congo. Let's see. Let's see how the OG British battle cruiser compares. Certainly, still got a decent tone of speed. Fourteen-inch guns, so you know, bigger caliber guns, much better range. Not great armor though. I definitely pushed in a bit too hard there, but I genuinely thought that T-22 was going to get taken care of, and it didn't. And then I didn't even have the threat of an allied destroyer nearby to, uh, to keep those battleships, uh, you know, on their toes. Okay, so we've been dunked into a tier 7 game, and there's a carrier. At least it's a different map this time. And all three games have been domination, so at least I don't have that to complain about. Also, no submarines. Man, we've, I've, I've reached that stage, and it, it took a while with World of Tanks to get to this stage as well, but... Yeah, with World of Tanks it was really... Mostly about the artillery, but I don't know, warships it's more kind of multiple things, where it's like, okay... I can sort of, I've got this little checklist in my head of is such and such a thing going to be in this game? If yes, then game probably going to be less fun. It's mostly subs and CVs. Although, I think if anything really made me stop playing it would be um, if they keep turning up the heat on monetization. But, you know, I could do a whole spiel on loot boxes and exploitation of uh, vulnerable people and uh, so on, but uh, I won't. There's people that have far more eloquently explained the problem than I. There was actually, um, I think it was a House of Lords... Oh, God. It was like a committee report or something saying, hey, you know these video game loot boxes meet really all of the criteria to um, be considered gambling and they absolutely are uh, targeted at people who have you know addictive personalities who have problems with these things um, you know it's not just uh, like different people are going to be uh, uh, you know, they're going to struggle with different things. For some people, obviously, you know, it's alcohol or other drugs or nicotine or, uh, you know, gambling. Um, you know, uh, other other stuff. There's probably other stuff, like, uh, I could be flippant and <laughs> say, like, you know, I don't know, collecting figurines of uh, uh, anime waifus. Uh, that's... I don't think that's... I think that's just me being facetious at that point. But, um... But, you know, for some people, these are real problems that uh, have potentially profoundly negative impacts on their lives. And, you know, gambling is one of those things, but the gaming industry is absolutely desperate to uh, hold on to that, that cash cow to keep exploiting people. I don't know, I'm absolutely not, you know... Just singularly pointing my finger at uh, wargaming here. No, you know, there's, there's far bigger companies. Although, you know, let's not forget wargaming is still a pretty big company. Um, with, uh, you know, far scummier track records in this regard. I mean, it's not that long ago that Diablo Immortal came out, and that's bloody Activision Blizzard, and that's absolutely finely honed and tuned and calculated to be psychologically manipulative. 
I did say I wasn't going to do a spiel, and here I am doing the spiel. But anyway, uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it was a thing. It was a thing. There was a, like a committee report, and the government just the the current Tory government just kind of shrugged their shoulders and went, "No, it's fine. The companies can regulate themselves." Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a reason why we don't take that approach with you know. Cigarette companies and alcohol companies and whatever else. And even, uh, you know, other other more readily acknowledged forms of gambling, but, uh, yeah. I don't know if it was incompetence or, you know, they just didn't understand these newfangled video games. I don't think Jacob Rees-Mogg would understand what a video game was. Even if you tied him to a chair and made him watch an entire playthrough of... God, I don't... I don't even know. What what would be a suitably... Something with cat girls and anime waifus? I don't know. I think you'd probably make his brain dribble out of his ears. I don't think he could comprehend such concepts. Uh, <laughs> which might be funny to watch, actually. But anyway... But, uh, yeah, it might be that, or it might l literally just have been lobbying. Which, uh, is it's not quite as bad a blight on U UK politics as is US politics, but it's still a pretty big blight. Hell, there was a whole, um, I was actually thinking about this earlier, there, there was a whole episode of the classic comedy, yes, was it, either, was it either Yes Minister or the follow-on series Yes Prime Minister, but it was essentially about um, uh, like tobacco lobbying, because that was kind of like the 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 pertinent topic back then in the 80s. And of course, tobacco companies had known for decades, and I'm sure like game companies, of course, exactly know how uh, addictive these things can be because they are very finely tuned to be addictive. It is not by accident, it is by design. But, uh, yeah. There was, was a whole episode and I, I, I have to go and watch the episode because I've not watched it in, in an age. But, uh, you know, we've, we've been here before. We have been here before. Even if uh, companies are peddling something sort of patently self-destructive to everyone else, you know, if they can make money doing it, then uh, they will happily claim otherwise. Right, I think we might be losing this one. <laughs> It would have been nice to at least have one win today, especially after the disaster of the last uh, video I did. But man, we are collapsing fast. I guess my my problem was, uh, you know, doing it on a weekend. Lack of sleep's probably not helping my case as well, but uh, yeah. Right, what do you want to bet there's a Hatsaharu? lurking around that corner. It's not like I'm in the position of... Oh no, there you are. It's not like I'm in the position of being in a, you know, a super strong ship within this matchmaking lineup to uh, make a huge difference. But I suspect even if I was in a super strong ship with a team that's managed to yeah, we've lost half of ours to one of theirs. And I'm having the joyful situation of a CV that's going for me. Although I shouldn't... I shouldn't be that easy prey. I am sat next to a Colorado for crying out loud. But on the other hand, you know, it's a Sterov. It's gonna get to make its drop. Why is the... HE fire in Bayern? I don't know. Okay, that was a decent hit. I guess this is just HE mid-tier battleships day or something. Well, that's going to have been the bar turn. And that is probably the sorry.
Yeah, that's the sorry. Look, Serov, there are other people. You don't have to pick on the tier 5. I am literally within two other battleships AA bubble, but apparently I'm the one that must die. Oh well, nothing really makes any difference. <laughs> this is absolutely a drubbing. Complete drubbing. Oh well. Well, they did manage to kill one or two more before the end, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty one-sided. Less said about that, the better. Oh, well, um, yeah, so it's, it's been another one of those <laughs> recordings, sadly, where, uh, the first one at least did some decent damage, and it was kind of a tight game, but not really. Um, they still had some very healthy battleships at the end, and then second and third game, just... Yeah, the curse of the Mutsuki held true! The teams with the Mutsukis lost. Yeah, second and third games were just complete drubbings. Uh, so, note to self, don't do this at weekends, because, um, yeah, apparently this is more likely to happen than not. The curse of the weekend still holds true. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that was uh, a look at the Tiger, though. Uh, I think it, it looks nicer than it plays overall. Um, just because I'm not really a massive fan of those, those guns. Um, yeah, it, it's the same thing as the, the Iron Duke, where you really do kind of have to rely on... Uh, uh, like, AP will get you somewhere, but you're going to have to use... a fair amount of HE as well. At least it's faster than Iron Duke. But, um... It's, it's the, the higher tiers I'm more interested in. So this this one might end up being a bit of a port queen, just like the Iron Duke is. And, uh... Who knows? Maybe, maybe someday we'll get to take tier 5s into operations. I know they've said tier 6 to tier 8, but uh, it's always been my hope that maybe we'd get, we'd get some lower tier operations someday as well, but probably not. So, you know, a port queen it remains. So, that's it for this video anyway. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too rambly. <laughs> Although, let's face it, it probably was. And if you did enjoy it, you can do all the usual things down underneath. And of course, as always... Stay tuned for more.